Hello, my name is Alex Velasquez, and I'll be helping facilitate today's webinar uh, titled HashiCorp Vault and Venify, Speed and Security for Cloud Operating Model Success. During this session, we will explore how DevOps teams are using HashiCorp Vault and Venify to make it fast and easy to use TLS SSL certificates across clouds with enterprise security compliance. Please feel free to type your questions during the webinar using the Q&A feature and uh, know that this webinar will be recorded and the recording will be made available after uh, post-processing, which usually takes a couple of days. Now I'll introduce our speakers. From Benefy, we have Ben Rogers, Senior Strategic Solutions Architect, and from HashiCorp, Justin Weising, Senior Technical Product Marketing Manager. And now here's Justin, who will start the presentation. Thank you, Justin. Hey, awesome. Thanks, Alex. Hey, um, uh, thanks for joining us today. And uh, also thanks to Ben Rogers for uh, um, sort of co-presenting today. Um, you know, we in this webinar, we wanted to walk through uh, using Vault as a PKI backend and then uh, using Venify to add sort of value added uh, solutions on top. And so uh, we'll just sip through the uh, presentation here. But uh, first, I wanted to chat about, um, you know, what's sort of the agenda. Um, I assume most of the folks on the call uh, know about uh, probably HashiCorp and Venify since they're uh, since you're watching this. But uh, just in case you don't, I, I just wanted to quickly sort of talk about uh, what HashiCorp and what Vault is at a high level, and then we'll uh, jump over to uh, Venify, and then we'll walk through a, a few demos, which uh, Ben was gracious enough to uh, provide. All right, so let's uh, get started. So. Um, what is HashiCorp? So HashiCorp is a uh, uh, company that provides a variety of DevOps automation tools. Um, you can see over in the uh, uh, right-hand side here, there's a, a bunch of different logos, and we have uh, sort of four enterprise products, but uh, the majority of these are open source and enterprise. So we have uh, Vagrant, which is um, uh, super popular with uh, sort of um, building uh, virtual machine images and sort of automating like developer workflow of, hey, you know, I want to, I want a developer box that has like MySQL install or something like that. You just do like bigger enough and away you go. And then we have Packer for building machine images, uh, Terraform for uh, infrastructure automation. Vault is obviously what we're going to be chatting about today. And then console and Nomad. Um, so uh, I just wanted to sort of step back for a second and chat about uh, what is Vault at a high level if you've um, uh, never used it before. So Vault is um, a service that sits on your network and it sort of acts as a central place where you can store secret data. So you, you can sort of think of this as like, hey, I have a bunch of passwords, username and passwords in Confluence or hey, they're in source code or they're in text files or they're in a text file on my developer laptop or something like that. And sort of modern applications, uh, when you're dealing with say on-prem or cloud infrastructure, you, you have this sprawl of secrets that are all over the place. You have um, you know, um, uh, database username and passwords, uh, cloud API keys, and it becomes really difficult to sort of track where, where these things are, uh, when they were rotated, who has access to them. You know, there's no auditing and logging and uh, that sort of stuff. So Vault is primarily targeted at solving that problem, right? You can collect all, the, collect all that sort of secret data and put it into Vault where it's encrypted both in transit and at rest. And then you have auditing and logging and access policies that you can control all that stuff with. Um, that's sort of one use case that uh, you can uh, use Vault for. Another is uh, data encryption. So we have something called the transit uh, engine, which allows you to encrypt and decrypt data. We also have something called a transform engine. This allows you to um, preserve uh, the character set of encryption that you, or data that you want to encrypt. So say for example, hey, I want to encrypt a phone number. Um, uh, the encrypted value will still be you know, all digits. Uh, that was launched in 1.4. And so the primary use case behind that is, hey, uh, you know, I have a bunch of data in a database and I want to encrypt it, but I don't necessarily want to go and alter the tables and stuff like that to, um, to necessarily encrypt it. So, you know, you can use the same format. Um, and then we have uh, something called the uh, Advanced Data Protection Module. This is where you can um, 
this is an enterprise feature, but uh, you can use it to say, uh, you know, I want to encrypt uh, VMware disk images, or you know, I have a, a NetApp filer and I want to encrypt the volumes that are on there. Uh, Vault also allows you to do that. Um, so one of the sort of guiding principles is identity brokering, and I think um, uh, Ben will also chat about this on the Venify side. But um, when you log into Vault, uh, say I'm a user or you know, maybe I'm an application or a machine or something like that, uh, I log into Vault, I'm gonna have sort of an access token that I connect to Vault with and, I, and it sort of acts as a way to identify, hey, who, who am I? And then on the Vault side, you can assign various policies to what that user can do. So say um, I, I have a, uh, an application that needs access to a, a database password. You know, you can assign very granular access to what that application when it logs in a vault and it says, hey, give me the database password. So the account downloads, say, other credentials and stuff like that. That's why identity is super important. But we also have, um, you know, identity where you can log in with a user. Uh, you can log in through, say, GitHub, uh, GCP, Azure, AWS. You can use your credentials to log into vault. Um, so you can sort of, you know, when I think about Vault, I sort of think of it as like an abstraction layer yeah, that sits, sort of a central service abstraction layer that sits in your network where uh, you can store all your secret data, but it also has all these various plugins uh, to talk to, um, you know, various cloud providers. Uh, you know, uh, there's integrations with Kubernetes. Um, and also, obviously, we have an integration uh, with Benefy. Um, which uh, we highlighted here. So um, I think I chatted about most of this. The sort of broad ecosystem th thing in here though, the key point is that uh, the majority of this is open source. You know, Vault is open source, it's free. You can go use all this uh, um, uh, technology. And then if you're an enterprise customer and you have sort of, hey, I wanna have multiple data centers, uh, or hey, what's my DR or HA plan? You know, we have uh, value added features on the enterprise side, um, as obviously as well as support. So I think at this point, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm gonna kick it over to uh, Ben for his part. One thing I, I uh, forgot to mention, uh, Alex mentioned it uh, also. Um, if you have any questions as we sort of walk through this or you know, what are the use cases or um, how do I get started with this um, type of stuff, uh, just pop it into the uh, question and answer section. And I'll try to answer the questions uh, while I'm going through, but we've also allotted time at the end of the webinar to uh, uh, answer the questions too. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing and then I'll pass it over to Ben. All right, great. Thanks, Justin. <clears throat> so, you know, picking up where, where Justin left off, um, Benefy has been around for about 15 years or so, and we've been working on this problem of protecting machine identities. And, and I'll get into a little bit more about this, but when we look at the world today, um, the number of people in the world is sort of in the billions, but the number of machines, and machines can be you know, virtual machines, they can be Docker containers, they can be laptops or phones or, or uh, data center systems, <clears throat> All of these things need identities, right? Just in the same way that people do. And, and this is really where the, the great marriage of, of what Vault provides and what Venify provides, where it's really much better together. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about, about that as well. So um, what are machine identities? So machine identities are things like TLS certificates because those identify services. Um, code signing certificates, those allow us to reliably identify and say, yes, this bit of code uh, comes from an authoritative source. It's something that my company wrote or something that uh, um, HashiCorp wrote, right? Uh, SSH keys also provide identity for um, Unix and Linux systems, typically, right, primarily. Uh, and then other things like API keys. And there's, there's some overlap with what Vault does and what Benefy does. Um, these are the things that TLS certificates, code signing, and SSH, these are the things that Venify has been primarily focused on over the past uh, 15 years or so. 
So um, we also have uh, an extraordinary oops, uh, ecosystem uh, of technology partners and uh, HashiCorp and, and in particular this Vault integration is one of the premier integrations that we have. And we're very, very excited that this has actually been included in the open source um, base version of Vault uh, as of the most recent Vault release, I believe uh, that was version 1.4. Is that right, Justin? Oh, sorry, yes, 1.4. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so in 1.4, yeah, 1.4, you will now find uh, the, the Venify Vault integrations. Uh, there's two of them. We'll talk a little bit about those um, already included in Vault. So the products that we offer today, um, there's two primary uh, platforms. One is uh, the, the Venify Trust Protection Platform. This is the platform that we've had for, uh, you know, 10, 15-ish years or so. And we also have another Venify Cloud uh, platform uh, with uh, DevOps Accelerate. And Vault integrates with both of these, uh, both of these offerings. And, and there's a little more that we'll tell you about as well a little bit later. Um, but today we're gonna be focusing specifically on the integration with the Trust Protection Platform. Um, this is typically going to be run on premise. You can run it in the cloud as well. Uh, but this is, you know, our, our product that we've had around for quite a while and is extraordinarily mature. So what are some of the challenges that we see faced by both security organizations and DevOps organizations? So primarily the DevOps organization, you know, one of their missions in life is go fast, right? Um, go fast and, and prosper. And they often need machine identities, X509 certificates, as an example, um, that are going to be used within the applications, within the things that they're creating. And if we look at some of the past strategies versus the there we go, uh, past stra strategies versus future strategies uh, for for DevOps teams, you know, in the past, visibility was gained by documentation, intelligence by process and automation um, was done outside of code, right? Where um, it was a, a more manual operational, or even if you were doing automation, it was still kind of manual to set that up. And it, the future strategies that we see is that visibility is done by code documentation, right? Um, intelligence is part of the APIs that are being used. And the automation is actually built right into the foundation, into that pipeline that actually creates all of the, the machines that exist in the environment. So when we look at, uh, when we contrast the, the challenges associated with the security team, um, you know, the security team is really there to ensure that, that the business doesn't suffer excessive risk, right? That, that's one of their jobs. And so, you know, they're, they've had this challenge of um, recognizing that the DevOps teams need machine identities, but not necessarily having a way to provide um, easy, fast, flexible solutions for them. And this integration that we have, or the two integrations that we have with Vault, um, are really going to highlight how the security team can provide these capabilities to the DevOps teams to reduce friction um, and also provide visibility, intelligence, and automation that benefit the security teams as well. And so, Again, if we if we contrast the past versus future uh, approaches, so you know visibility in the past was was achieved by scanning, so discovery of some sort, and in the future this is going to be done in real time. And by real time we mean it's it's already built into the fabric, and so we know that machine identities are being handed out or being asked for. Uh, we know exactly where that's happening. Um, intelligence used to be done with spreadsheets or, or maybe even none. And now we're looking at things like smart policy, and we'll see a little bit of how that works today. Um, and automation in the past was done by, you know, lots of mouse clicks. So you come in and click and point and say, okay, well, set this up. And then in the future, it would automate and, and go on. Um, whereas today uh, and in the future, we're seeing more and more automation uh, being done, uh, built right into that pipeline. Um, some of the other, the other specific challenges from the security team is they need to be able to provide 
um, policy enforcement, or they need to be able to, you know, have policy enforcement. And the DevOps teams need both privately trusted machine identities and publicly trusted machine identities. And so our demos today, we're actually going to show how teams can get both of those things. So let's talk a little bit about the two different plugins that are available. And uh, the graphic on the right side uh, comes from a, a white paper that Venify and HashiCorp put together about the cloud operating model. And as we see organizations go from low to high security, uh, we're going to talk talk through this, or I'm sorry, use some of this language. So stage one, two, and three uh, in the demos, where stage one is is effectively you're setting up Vault as a standalone PKI. It's going to be handing out secrets from that thing, and you know that of course satisfies the needs of the DevOps, DevOps teams to be able to have low friction and go go fast but it totally doesn't do anything for the security team, right? And so we're going to talk about stages two and three, which provide a solution for both the, the security and the DevOps teams. So the first uh, one, um, actually, we're going to talk about these in the reverse order here. We're going to talk first about the monitor engine, uh, but I wanted to line up the, um, the stages with the engines. So uh, stage three, is going to be the Venify Secrets engine. And this is going to allow your, your users, or the, the DevOps teams, the ability to get either publicly trusted certificates, and in this demo, we're gonna use DigiCert, um, or you can get enterprise uh, you know, certificates that, from your existing enterprise PKI, right? So Microsoft PKI or whatever. Uh, the Venify Monitor engine, this functions, there's a couple of different ways that this works. Um, but the way that we're going to show it today is it's going to be functioning as a sub certificate authority. It's going to be uh, sub, um, it's going to be operating as part of the existing enterprise PKI chain. And, and it's also going to be functioning in a standalone way in which you're able to get certificates out of this PKI. And at the end, it just provides visibility back to Venify. Um, it also provides policy enforcement and things like that. So uh, the demo, so in stage two, we're going to deal with the monitor engine and we're going to see the policy enforcement and how that works uh, while still providing very fast access to uh, certificates um, and machine identities to the vault consumers. So how does this work? Uh, I know this is maybe a little bit of an eye chart. Um, it's kind of a, a lot of stuff on here. But if we look at the left side of this screen here, the developers are going to be using Vault. And they're going to say, I need a certificate, right? And the way this is going to work is that the Vault uh, is going to have a certificate that is chained to an existing PKI. Um, and it's going to provide that visibility back to the Venify platform. Um, and in this setup process, we're actually going to go through and have Vault request a, an issuing authority from the Venify platform that will then be issued off of uh, a Microsoft PKI that I have configured in the Venify platform. Uh, it'll return that, it'll get that set up, and then we'll see all of the policy that comes from Venify relative to um, key usage and uh, names that are allowable and, and things like that, uh, that automatically get applied to Vault. So just, uh, again, what we're going to cover in the demo, um, show that we're going to be able to enforce uh, policy. Uh, we're going to be forwarding all certificates that are issued in Vault to the Venify platform, uh, which then, of course, provides the security team uh, visibility and auditability of what has actually happened. Um, it reduces uh, complex uh, complexity and, and errors, um, and it allows for consistent multi-cloud operations. So this is one of the really um, critical components or, or very important components of this cloud operating model that, uh, that HashiCorp ha has really uh, been evangelizing, which is the ability to be cloud agnostic. So it doesn't matter whether you're running in AWS, GCP, uh, or, you know, Ben's awesome new cloud service that I just created, right? Uh, but being able to have 
um, independence from those things and be able to, to shift and move is one of the benefits that you get out of using both Vault and Venify uh, in this example. So we're going to jump over here to uh, my systems. And sorry, I gotta see if I can move my, here we go. All right, <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna take a look at, we're inside of the Venify platform and the Venify platform has this uh, folder based structure here. And what's gonna happen is certificates are going to end up being, um, uh, they're going to end up in these folders. So the Vault Sub CA, this is going to be the folder that uh, provides policy for how that Sub CA is going to be created. Um, <clears throat> the PKI Monitor Web Server folder, this is the one that's going to provide the, the policy for the web server certificates that we're going to issue off of that Sub CA. So if we come and take a look at the Vault uh, Sub CA component, We'll see here that there are some values, uh, subject DN values for that issuing authority that are automatically gonna be applied um, to that, that issuing authority. And we have a template here where we're going to be able to go and get a vault sub CA uh, template, um, key size, these things. Uh, so these are some of the, the, the abilities that Venify has to apply policy to machine identities. And then the next folder that we have here is the PKI monitor web server. And we see that the things like the organizational unit, we're gonna have cool app in our, uh, in our OU. And our organization, um, we've actually set this here. And uh, so Venify Demo Inc is going to be the organization in Salt Lake City. And so we'll see all of these things showing up in our demo without us actually having to do anything on the vault side aside from point to this Venify policy. So uh, with that said, we'll jump over here. Um, I've already done the install plugins and uh, because of this demo, we're gonna skip the level one setup. Um, we're gonna leave that as a, an exercise to the reader. There's plenty of documentation out there for how to go and set up Vault as a standalone PKI or, or even a, a sub CA uh, PKI. Um, the level two and level three these, uh, this is actually work that I did with um, one of my counterparts, uh, uh, just, um, Justin uh, Garrison, and he and I put together a couple of blogs to actually document how to set this up. And so those, uh, there is a resource at the end of this that points you over to there. Um, so you can set up something like this as well. So we're gonna set up level two here in our environment. And this is just going to go through and it's going to prompt me to hit enter so that uh, we go through and step through all these uh, things. So we see the first thing that we did is we set up a Venify policy in Vault. And it pulls down and it says, uh, you know, things like the state, OU, the O, right? These are all things that are coming directly from over here, right? Um, so the Vault Issuing Authority is our OU, right? Uh, the Venify Demo Inc. Um, what's that one? Uh, here we go, the O right here. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna create a key pair. Uh, so we're just using standard Vault um, commands here to do this. And we're then gonna get an API key to authenticate to Venify um, to be able to get a CSR. There is another way that we can do this using just Venify APIs to have Venify actually create the Vault policies. Um, but because I'm running Vault on my laptop, I didn't have a way to get from my AWS demo account uh, down to my laptop. So uh, we're, we're doing this a little bit the, the old school way, but this is actually the way that, we, that uh, Justin and I documented it. So um, next we're going to install the sub CA. So we've got our certificate issued. And if we come over here, oops. sorry, I'm gonna do my windows straight here. Uh, if we come over to our um, inventory, we're going to look at the vault sub CA folder and we're gonna see that we now have this certificate. So it was issued uh, just today. Um, and uh, let's see. 
Right, so valid from 6, 4, about 11, 15. Yep, that's uh, about right. So um, now we're going to install this into Vault. And uh, so we're running the Vault Write uh, command for that certificate. And then we're going to configure the, uh, the URIs um, for things like the revocation. Uh, you know, where does that live? So uh, the Vault Write um, config URLs. That's what we just did. And now our sub CA is done, right? We've set this up so that we can now actually issue against, against this. So there's a couple other pieces of, of uh, thing, uh, information that we need to set up first. So the first is we need to point uh, this role. So I, I've called this endpoint the PKI monitor, right? Because that's the use case number two or level two. Um, and what we want to do is we want to have this web, web server role. So this is the one that's going to be able to issue certificates uh, that are going to follow this policy here in Venify. So we're going to say, yes, go do that. And what I wanted to show here is when we do this, uh, after we create our role, I wanted to show you the values in here in that we don't have anything for um, the the locality right so that's blank uh we don't have anything for the country so really none of the dn information is uh is populated and so what we want to do is we want to also create a policy a venify policy that tells us that the web server role is going to be associated with this folder here in venify so we see here that uh, this data, so the cool app organizational unit, so the cool app um, OU reg regex, uh, comes from this policy and then will be applied to that web server role here in just a minute. Um, one of the cool things that we just updated in this, uh, this integration is the ability for these two things to sync themselves. So when I create this web server role, I'm sorry, when I create this web server policy, it will then know that this web server role needs to be updated. So after we're, uh, after we're done here, I, I've got a little delay in there. That's why it's um, waiting for us here. Um, then we will see that now our vault role, our, our PKI monitor web server role, now it has things like country and it has locality and OU. So that when we go and we actually request a certificate, all of this is going to be filled in for us. And really the only data we need to supply is going to be our common name and, and subject alternative names if necessary. And then just uh, again, to verify that our policy is set up correctly, we want to make sure that it's pointing to that web server for the roles um, and also the enforcement and import. So the import is the one that controls the ability to send the certificates that are issued in Vault back up to the Venify platform so that we get a copy of those. All right, so uh, level two is enabled. Now what we're going to do is we're going to test our level two. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to just generate a new certificate. We saw that took very little time because this is actually being issued Right off of the Venify, um, right off of the Vault platform here, this local PKI. So we're going to go and take a look here in just a second for uh, certificates that uh, was issued here. Um, so if we just go back, and we're going to use an, a different filter here um, because there's another thing that we just added recently where we have the ability to now say, show me certificates that have been added by HashiCorp Vault. And we see here that uh, this should be our right one, 0604-113044. Yep, that is our certificate. And we get a warning message that it's expiring soon. This is actually a 24 hour certificate. So we see one day left. Um, so, the one day is actually a, a function of how the local vault is configured to um, issue certificates. So um, 
I'm going to pause there for just a minute. So we did see that this certificate got uh, issued. So I'm going to jump back over here uh, to the live demo. Um, and again, we can answer questions about how this all works uh, at the very end. So I'm going to continue on to the stage three or level three. So this is going to be using the vault uh, integration we, we refer to as the secrets engine or also the PKI backend. And this one works a little bit differently. So the, the main difference with this is that you're going to be using Venify as the conduit to get certificates from other sources. And what we mean by that is we're going to be uh, having the CSR be generated in Vault. It's going to be sent up to Venify. Venify is going to make that decision based on how the policy is configured as to where this is going to be issued. And in this demo, we're going to get it issued off of DigiCert. And so we're going to make that, that connection with DigiCert. We're going to get that issued. And then we'll return it back down to uh, the platform. And the beauty of this whole solution is that as a developer, you don't have to know any of the differences between these things. You simply point at a different endpoint. And the way that I created these endpoints is one of them is called PKI-monitor and one of them is called PKI-backend. And so that's really the only difference that you as a developer would see is, oh, I'm using the, the PKI-monitor versus the PKI-backend <coughs> um, endpoint in, in this uh, configuration. So, uh, you know, the Venify platform, as we saw earlier in that, that giant um, slide of all the various technology partners and integrations, uh, we have 40 plus different certificate authorities and you have the ability to tap into all of those. Um, similar kinds of, of value propositions to the other plugin, right? So eliminating complexity, um, allowing the security team to get both visibility and enforce policy, um, have auditability, uh, and, and again, allowing for that consistent multi-cloud operational model uh, for the, the enterprise. So let me jump over here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this PKI backend web server uh, role, um, policy in Benefy. So in this one, we're going to see that certificates are going to be issued using the awesome app uh, OU and um, in this one, I said or Venify demo, but I believe that the DigiCert template actually will override this, um, and it's going to create a certificate for the, the fictitious company that we have called Amplicite. So we see here that our policy is setting us, to, the CA template policy is setting us to a 90-day DigiCert um, template for this Amplicite brand. Now, this is... Uh, a much easier setup. There's really effectively just one thing to set up in here, which is to set up this uh, PKI backend once you know the plugin is installed. We really just have to set up this one PKI backend uh, for uh, the role called web server, and we're done. So uh, we gave it a few variables here, um, you know, things like how do we want to store the certificates in here. Uh, and these are a little bit different than the, the, the default PKI that exists um, you know, from, from HashiCorp, uh, where you're able to store things in a couple different ways. So now what we want to do is to test our level three. And this one is going to take a little bit longer for it to run. Um, it's going to be you know, maybe uh, four, five, eight seconds or so. Uh, for this whole process to, to finish. Um, but, you know, as we see, we're getting a certificate issued out of DigiCert, something that, you know, you can sort of do um, today if you go and do things like Acme or, or whatever. Um, but then you're, you don't really have this, uh, this complete agnostic um, approach and it sort of limits as to how many different certificate authorities you can go and use. So again, this one took about eight and a half seconds. And we see all of the uh, values here. Um, we see the full uh, certificate chain being returned to us. And if we come back here and 
uh, refresh our view. Oops. Uh, so we're going to do regular HashiCorp Vault, um, which is the other, uh, the PKI backend integration. And we come in and we see that this is a 90-day certificate um, issued out of uh, DigiCert. We see it's the DigiCert global root. Um, it's the SHA-2 secure server CA certificate. So uh, just a quick recap. Um, as we move up this stack, right, from going from stage one or level one, stage two, stage three, we continue to get visibility, we get the ability to enforce policy, and we also don't restrict the development team, the, you know, the DevOps team, from being able to do their job, to be able to say, I need to get a certificate for whatever use case it is, and be able to use that agnostic approach using Vault um, for, for the fulfillment of that machine identity. And I just wanna to make a mention here that both the HashiCorp and Venify platforms provide this capability regardless of what your infrastructure looks like. So whether it's existing, you know, traditional quote static data centers or whether it's a more uh, modern dynamic data center, you know, in the cloud, private cloud, whatever it is, the Venify and HashiCorp solution is going to provide you uh, that capability regardless of where you are. So I wanted to say, you know, there's one little bit more here. So we've talked today about Vault and how that integration works. Um, there's also the ability to have this done in Terraform. So there's a direct integration within Terraform uh, that uses that second model that I, that I talked through, um, the, I'm sorry, the level three model uh, that uses the Venify plugin to get certificates out of the Venify platform. And console can also use Vault uh, in the same manner to be able to request machine identities and, and manage and secure those things. Again, across whatever cloud you're dealing with, um, there's a, a link at the end of this to the, uh, the cloud operating model white paper uh, that HashiCorp and Venify put together um, about a year ago or so. That's uh, really a, a pretty interesting read and highly suggest that, that you go and, and take a look at that. So with that said, uh, I think we are done with our, our technical discussion here and the, the product overviews. I um, want to turn this back over to uh, Justin and Alex. Hey, awesome. Thanks, Ben. Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that uh, I've sort of been answering uh, questions live, but there's a, a few questions about Venify, and we'll, we'll sort of oh, uh, get to those in a sec. But uh, okay. I just wanted to, uh, someone asked a question, hey, will the recording and the slide deck be sent out? And uh, yes, they will. Um, Alex uh, will be doing that in the next few days. So, uh, um, you know, you don't necessarily have to worry about screenshotting any of this stuff because we have all the links and all the resources. All right, so um, I think I'm gonna pass it over to Alex. Or Alex, do you just want us to start answering questions here? Yeah, let's go ahead and, and get started with the questions. I think that's the best way to proceed. Awesome. So um, I've more. answered uh, sort of live. I've been going through and answering a lot of the uh, vault questions. Um, but uh, um, there is a couple um, uh, ones so, in here too. Um, so I'm just, and I'm unable to see the Q and A for some reason when I click on it, it doesn't bring me into that Q and A. Sure. I, I can uh, read them out. Um, so, uh, there's one here I don't necessarily know the answer to. So when switching from the vault to Venify backend, can Venify use the same CA uh, private key or must we redeploy the, the CA certificate on all the client desktops? So um, let's see, so redeploy the, uh, I guess it depends on how you want to do this. I believe that right now, um, the only way that we've been able to get the uh, the vault model to work as a sub CA is to generate a new certificate authority, uh, a new sub CA. Um, I've heard rumors that it is possible to import an existing key uh, into that. 
Um, but I, I just haven't spent any time to actually um, try and get that to work. So uh, allegedly, you don't have to redeploy a new route everywhere. Um, but uh, I would say that's maybe something that uh, we do in another uh, blog at some point. OK, cool. Um, and then the next question here is, um, uh, who decides the lifetime of a certificate and it can be it can it be issued around machine identities or is it set by a security policy um, basically like who sets the the sort of TTL on the certificate I know on the vault side um, uh, you know when you're setting up the uh, PKI infrastructure you can um, uh, tweak those values in there but uh, I imagine uh, Venify has a, a solution for that too so um, so there's a couple different answers to this, depending on what we're looking at. For the monitor plugin, um, the, the vault has the ability to specify that TTL. Um, and that's something that doesn't directly come out of the Venify platform today. Uh, it is something that we're looking at adding um, to that, um, but it doesn't, it's not there today. For the level three, um, version, the one where we're using Venify as that pass through to, uh, to a public authority or to an internal authority, the, the time to live on those is set by uh, the certificate authority themselves. And so the answer sort of depends because some certificate authorities allow you to uh, request a specific end date or, or a specific time. Um, many certificate authorities still require a specific timeline or um, validity period for certificates. And so that's often set up um, in the policy in Venify or at the certificate authority. And regardless of what you ask for within Vault, you're gonna get whatever that policy says, uh, either within Venify or within the certificate authority. Awesome, great. Um, and then the next Venify uh, question here is, um, is Venify a book of record for machine identities? I, I imagine you probably have to read a bit into that question to. Uh... <laughs> yeah, so that's a, I mean, that's a pretty broad question. Um, and I guess the, the short answer I would say is yes. Uh, you know, Venify has, um, you know, been the leader in this space for 15 years. Uh, we invented the technology that helps organizations secure and protect machine identities across the enterprise. Um, so whether they're in your existing data center or whether they're in your new cloud data centers, um, Venify has that ability to provide you visibility, intelligence, and automation for all of those machine identities that, that we discussed. Now, in that slide where it talked about the four machine identity types, um, the one that we don't have any products for today is really that API key use case. Um, and really, that's something where we often look at uh, Vault as a, a solution for things like API keys, and um, you know, may not be something that we would we would ever offer a solution for. Awesome. And then the next one here is, um, which attributes slash intelligence about machine identity would need to be collected to enable machine identity governance and monitoring? I, I imagine this is probably you know, as you're setting this up. Uh, right. Yeah. So, uh, so this is something that typically, you know, you work through at the, the business and architecture level. So um, from a, a specific deployment perspective, usually what we see <clears throat> is that every team and, and maybe even application kind of depending on how, um, how your organization is structured. So, when, when we see organizations moving to like a full stack ownership model, we will have one team that owns the whole stack for a particular application. And so we'll have one role in, uh, in Vault that is specific to that particular application. And it's gonna correlate to a specific folder in Venify where uh, we know things like, well, what types of certificates are you going to be using? Do you need, um, privately trusted, do you need publicly trusted, uh, and things like ownership. That's also a, a really important aspect of this to understand who actually owns this because we have, 
a scenario in which it's not people going and clicking and saying, you know, Ben needs a certificate for that application. It's this application needs it, but we still have to have people that are involved in, um, you know, things like notifications if something goes wrong, right? Something goes off the rails and a certificate may expire in the next, you know, day or, or 30 minutes or something like that. We, we want to make sure that we're aware that um, those things are, are, you know, we're getting notifications that, hey, something's off the rails here. Um, but the other bits of data, things like, you know, key size and um, the organization, you know, the, the DN components of the certificate, those are usually things that are preset by the security policy in the organization. And so um, those then just carry over into this, uh, this model when, when you're enforcing that behavior uh, within Vault. Awesome, thanks. Justin, does that seem like that answers the question? I think so. Uh, you know, um, uh, uh, Daniela, you know, if that doesn't answer that question, then uh, uh, feel free to like ask a, or clarify it. All right, I'm gonna close that one out. Hey, um, uh, Ram asked one here on the on the vault side. Uh, can a HSM sign uh, do the signing? Uh, you know, I'm not sure about that. I've I've uh, in Slack here. I've, I've pinged the engineering team. You know, from my understanding, that it, when you're using an HSM with Vault, it uh, is only used for say like um, uh, entropy augmentation and you know using uh, Vault seal and unseal functionality, auto unseal that type of stuff. I I don't know for sure about the PKI piece, so I've asked. If they get back to me uh, within the next couple of minutes, I'll I'll reply. Um, if not, I'll uh, when we send out the follow up, uh, you know, slides and uh, recording, I'll make sure to get that answer to you. Thanks. Um, so a next question here: uh, Is there a use case for Venify to update the certs that have? Um, maybe let me just summarize this. So, hey, I'm using uh, Vault and Venify. Can I uh, distribute the new certificates to say F5 uh, appliances or other network hardware? So I guess there's, the question is, uh, hey, I, I wanna use the Vault and Venify to generate these certificates, but does like Venify have the functionality to distribute these uh, secrets out? Uh, I know on the Vault side, you know, we uh, don't look after the distribution of certificates or anything like that. You know, you just hit the endpoints and we generate them and then it's up to you to sort of automate that but uh, I don't know about the Venify piece. Mm -hmm. so, um, so there's a couple of different operational models that we see and the model with Vault is always a pull model, meaning there's some entity out there that needs something from Vault and it's gonna contact Vault and say, please give me one of these. I'm gonna then take that and do whatever I need to with it, right? So in, in that case, there was, uh, there was an F5 question specifically. Um, as far as I know, F5 doesn't have a direct integration with Vault today. Um, with that said, Venify has had integrations with F5 for about 12 or 15 years. And so um, there's actually a couple of different integrations that we have. Uh, typically, the integration is Venify is going to be using um, F5's API to push certificates into, uh, um, into the F5. There's actually a new integration that F5 has just built using their Big IQ platform that talks directly to Venify to be able to go and get certificates issued. So if we're talking about F5 specifically, there, there's not really an intersection of uh, Vault and Venify in that particular paradigm. Um, this paradigm is really more for, I have a CI CD pipeline and I'm gonna be creating Docker containers or Linux boxes or you know, um, other sorts of uh, virtual machines or things like that, where you're going to be pulling a certificate out um, at runtime uh, or, or at deploy time uh, for all of these things. Awesome. Um... Uh, so just to get back on the uh, HSM question about, uh, you know, can Vault uh, sign uh, the certificates using an HSM, uh, our engineering uh, team just replied back no. So, uh, you know, we only use uh, HSM integration with Vault for, say, entropy augmentation and using the auto NCL functionality. Um, uh, let's see if there's any other questions here. Um, so 
the roles are defined in Vault, but the policy is defined in Venify as a in the level two scenario. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's right. the question. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So the the term policy here is overloaded uh, because there are policies that exist in Venify, and the policy in Venify says. Um, you have to get a certificate with this key size and um, this distinguished name, and these are the allowed domains and things like that. <clears throat> that policy is then consumed on the vault side using uh, for, for the PKI monitor um, integration, that, that level two one. Um, it is consumed using that, uh, that Venify dash policy construct where it pulls that down from the Venify platform. And then that is then mapped to a role. So the role is the actual thing that you use to consume a certificate out of Vault. So that um, that are necessary. Oh, looks like my headphones uh, just went away. Uh, can you guys still hear me OK? Yeah, I can hear you, Ben. Okay. Yeah, we hear you. Great. Um, so then that, yes, that role is our so what is uh oops sorry i'm getting more messages can you, can you still hear me yeah yeah i can hear you it, it uh went in and out for a sec but i can hear you okay. <laughs> great um so uh so yeah so that role within vault is the thing that says i need a certificate and it'll supply some of the data like you know time to live and things like that um but yes the the policy from Venify is applied to the Venify policy inside of Vault that then um, interacts with that role uh, in Vault to be able to say, give me a certificate and this is what it's always gonna look like. Perfect. Uh, so there's a couple more questions. One is, uh, hey, we're an enterprise driven company and um, you know, is this service gonna be a, a shared service across the organization? Is, is this sort of the model? Um, 100% on the Vault side. That's what uh, Vault is designed for. You know, uh, Vault is a service that sits on your network. It acts as a, a central service that uh, a lot of your applications can go and consume, both uh, users and you know machines. Um, obviously, the same thing for uh, Benefi. Yep, that's exactly um, right. Uh, a shared service model is is exactly the best practice for how Benefi should be rolled out um, enterprise wide. Yeah. And then um, uh, Eric has a question here about, uh, hey, you know, if I'm going to use uh, HashiCorp Vault to uh, centralize all my keys, what's the performance implications? So on the performance uh, side, um, Vault, uh, typ Vault typically isn't installed just as like one, one instance or something like that, right? You're going to have uh, mul multiple instances of Vault that uh, will form a, a high available, highly available cluster. Um, uh, you know, we have both uh, options for integrated storage and also um, uh, external storage using something like console. Um, so, you know, these are, uh, you know, highly available uh, clusters that support like many thousands of requests per second. Um, you know, if you, once you get into the enterprise uh, space, you can have uh, performance replication, disaster recovery, uh, you know, failover clusters, all that kind of stuff. So it, to say like, you know, what, what's the performance implications? It uh, sort of depends on your architecture, but we have uh, customers that are doing, uh, you know, tens of thousands of requests per second, uh, uh, no problem. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, if you're interested in the open source side, I I'd, uh, sort of recommend checking out the integrated storage feature as that uh, allows you in just in, in the open source uh, world to use, um, you know, a highly available cluster that'll be super performant. But once you get into, say, the enterprise space and are looking at uh, those sorts of architectures, uh, if you just type uh, HashiCorp Vault reference architecture, uh, you'll get a huge document that gives you, you know, our recommended uh, um, architecture along with all the performance implications there. And and you know specifically with this integration uh, between Venify and Vault um, relative to performance, the the level two or the stage two model is. Um, it's set up in a way that you're, you can run this in a disconnected fashion. So that was one of the early requests that we had heard from our customers was, you know, we're going to go and create this stuff and we're going to deploy Vault to a cloud and it may never have access back to home office or it may never have access back to wherever Venify lives. 
Um, and so we need to be able to make sure that we can create that vault, set policy, and just let it run. And if it never is able to talk back to home office, that's fine, right? And <clears throat> uh, so the performance implication of that is all of the signing is happening locally for that particular PKI. And so you get similar performance to what you would have if you're just running the standard um, uh, uh, level one or, or um, stage one uh, vault PKI. Now with the stage three, there is a required connection between Vault and Venify for every certificate that comes through there. And so, uh, you know, those are going to be where you're going to use things like um, my ingress point needs to get a publicly trusted certificate. And so you're going to get one of those, but you only get it once every 30 days or 90 days or 60 days. It's not like you're spinning up, um, you know, a thousand uh, uh, Docker containers right now, and you need to get a thousand certificates right now. Awesome. Um, I think I just okay. want to be cognizant of time. We have about uh, you know a couple of minutes left. I, I just want to squeeze in one more question, and then we'll uh, uh, close you down. Um, so, is there a, the ability to have contact information added to the certificate object uh, within Venify when it generates the certificate? Yes, absolutely. That is part of the policy construct, and I. I probably glossed over that a little bit, but um, assigning contacts, whether they're you know, typically they're going to be Active Directory contacts, um, is how you do that. You do that at the policy folder level within Venify, and so that's where we start to see uh, you're going to have one folder for each application type that, or each application stack, or however you have your your applications organized within uh, your enterprise. That's going to be roughly the mapping. Uh, for those folder structures. Perfect. Maybe I'll try to squeeze okay. in one more. There's, it looks like a quick question here. So in the stage three configuration, um, can you pass in um, custom field values to Venify? You know, we, this uh, person is saying, hey, we have custom sort of fields that are marked as required when, when we want to view the certificate. So, right. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know if that has made it into this integration. We've added the ability to do custom fields within vCert, which is what Vault uses. Um, but I, I don't know that that's actually there. Typically, that's going to show up um, on the policy side of things. And so you'll set those policy values um, within Venify, and they will automatically be applied to all certificates that end up in that folder that exists within Venify based on you know, where it came from in Vault. Perfect. Hey, um, Ben, you know, I just want to say uh, thanks very much, um, you know, uh, especially for the presentation and then doing all the Q&A. And, uh, you know, it was a pleasure having you. And then I'll uh, pass it back to Alex and I think we'll close her up. Yeah, thanks to both of you. Thank you so much. As we said at the beginning, we are recording the session and we will be sending the, uh, the recording once it's been processed. It takes a, co a couple of days to do. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.